Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to discuss computer file systems. These are the standards for organising data on a hard drive, SSD or other storage device and are applied when you format a drive or partition. Today there are lots of different file systems in use, with the choices available to you depending on the operating system you're using and the type of drive you're formatting. So, for example, here in Windows, if I want to format this SSD, I'm offered the file system choices of NTFS or XFAT. Whereas, here in Linux, if I want to format this USB flash drive, the file system options are FAT32, NTFS or EXT4. So, what are the differences between file systems and which should you choose? File systems divide the storage space on a drive into virtual compartments known as clusters and maintain an index of where individual files are located and available free space. The first DOS and Windows file system was known as the File Allocation Table or FAT, with three major variants developed known as FAT12, FAT16 and FAT32. Each FAT variant can divide a drive into an increasing number of clusters and supports an increasing maximum file size and volume size. So, for example, FAT12 supported a maximum file and volume size of 32 megabytes. Meanwhile, FAT32 can store individual files up to 4 gigabytes in size and is limited to 32 gigabyte volumes if formatted in Windows up to 2 terabyte volumes when formatted with other operating systems and has an absolute maximum volume size of 16 terabytes. FAT32 remains a popular file system due to its high level of compatibility across operating systems and is still widely used to format USB flash drives, memory cards and some other external storage devices. Today, the most popular Windows file system is the New Technology File System, or NTFS. This was introduced in 1993 to overcome the limitations of FAT32 and has a file size limit of 16 exabytes. An exabyte is 1 million terabytes, so in practice there's no file size constraint. NTFS is also a journaling file system, which means that it maintains a record of changes so it can recover following a system crash or power failure. Unlike FAT32, NTFS also supports file permissions, for example allowing a file to be flagged as read-only, as well as encryption and other features that make NTFS more suitable than FAT32 for use on a system drive. For these reasons, all modern versions of Windows must be installed on a drive that is NTFS formatted. The only real downside of NTFS is a lack of compatibility with older versions of Windows and non-Windows operating systems. For example, by default, NTFS volumes are read-only in Mac OS and in older Linux distros and may not be readable at all on other devices such as standalone media players. XFAT, or the Extended File Allocation Table, was introduced by Microsoft in 2006 as a file system optimised for high capacity USB flash drives and memory cards. XFAT is less sophisticated than NTFS but has significant benefits over FAT32. Not least, the maximum file size is 16 exabytes, or effectively unlimited, which makes XFAT the best choice for formatting memory cards for recording video. For this reason, XFAT has been adopted by the SD Card Association as the default file system for SDXC memory cards. In terms of compatibility, XFAT enjoys wider non-Windows support than NTFS, with read and write support on Macs and recent versions of Android. This said, many Linux systems require extra drivers to be installed to access XFAT devices. Talking of Linux, in 1992 the Extended File System, or EXT, was launched specifically for this operating system. 
1993, an update called Extended File System 2, or EXT2, was then released and was for many years the default file system in many Linux distros. By 2001, EXT2 was upgraded to EXT3, which introduced journaling to protect against corruption in the event of crashes or power failures. In 2008, we then saw the release of EXT4, which is the most modern, dedicated Linux file system. EXT4 has a maximum file size of 16 terabytes and a maximum volume size of 1 exabyte. However, as you may anticipate, neither Windows or Mac OS offer native EXT2, EXT3 or EXT4 support. HFS, or the Hierarchical File System, was introduced by Apple in 1985 for use in Mac OS. It offers a maximum file size of 2GB and a maximum volume size of 2TB and is also known as Mac OS Standard. In 1998, HFS was upgraded to a new version called HFS Plus or HFS Extended, otherwise known as Mac OS Extended. This added journaling and has a maximum file size and volume size of 8 exabytes when using Mac OS 10.4 or above. In 2017, Apple introduced a new file system called APFS or the Apple File System, which is optimised for SSDs and other solid state media. Hardly surprisingly, HFS, HFS Plus and APFS are not natively supported by Windows or other non-Apple operating systems. Finally, I thought I'd mention ZFS or the Z file system. Initially released in 2006, this was created by Sun Microsystems, but since 2013 has been developed by the Open ZFS project. ZFS differs from other file systems because it integrates a volume manager to control the storage hardware attached to a computer. By integrating physical drive management with file system functionality, ZFS provides increased protection against data loss or corruption. ZFS is currently available for Linux, FreeBSD and TrueOS, and in the future may be ported to Windows and macOS. So, which file system should you choose? Well, for your system drive, you should or must choose the file system for your chosen operating system, which means NTFS for Windows, EXT4 for a Linux distro, or HFS Plus or APFS on a Mac. For USB drives and flash memory cards, FAT32 remains the best choice for devices below 32GB in capacity in order to maximise compatibility across platforms. Meanwhile, XFAT is the best choice for a flash drive or memory card of 32GB capacity or more, or when you need to store files greater than 4GB in size. For external hard drives or SSDs, NTFS is the best choice for anybody who is entirely or primarily Windows based, while XFAT is probably the best choice for anybody who regularly shares files between a PC and a Mac. Subject to its file size and volume size limitations, FAT32 also remains an option for external drives that need to be accessed across a wide range of Windows, Mac and Linux systems. Several years ago, I was making an Explaining Computers video about a single board computer and I had to download an operating system image, I did so I downloaded it to flash drive and I had to decompress that file so I could use it on the single board computer. And initially I tried decompressing the file using WinZip and it failed. And so I tried using 7-Zip and it failed again. And so I moved to another computer and it still failed. And eventually I went, ah, oh, you're an idiot. Why was it? Because I was actually trying to decompress the file on a flash drive that was formatted FAT32 and the uncompressed file was slightly bigger than 4GB, which was unusual for a single board computer image, but that was the issue. And so as I was decompressing the file, everything worked fine until it hit 4GB in size, it then couldn't be contained on a FAT32 drive and everything failed. And since that time, I've had an even greater awareness of making sure I know the file system in use 
on a drive when I use it for certain purposes. And I hope that this video has made you also more aware of the significance of file systems and which one you're using. And if you're asking me now, how do you check the file system on the drive? Well, just go to an operating system, put in the drive, right click to bring up properties, and you'll see the file system on the drive. And if it's not the one you want, you can change it, but remember the only way to change it is to reformat the drive and you would lose all data on the drive in the process. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.